In this video, I'm gonna show you how I installed a transfer switch into my electrical panel, and now I'm powering my entire shop from this Opus Mega 2 power station. And if you're looking for more information on the Opus, I have that information on my YouTube channel, which is Justin's Project. I have a full review on the Opus Mega 2 and a full review on the Opus B2 expandable battery. And I tried really hard to make this as most detailed video possible on how to install a transfer switch. It is a pretty simple process. I do wanna throw a disclaimer out there really quick that I'm not a licensed electrician or a certified electrician. I am comfortable with doing this type of work. I have wired my entire solar system. I've wired this entire shop. I've done a lot of electricity work, but I do need to point out that I'm not a licensed electrician or a certified electrician. So if you're not comfortable working with electricity, I would recommend reaching out to an electrician, have them come out and hook this up. If you're comfortable working with things like this and you wanna take on the risk, then be sure to check out the rest of the video. Now let's rewind in time and start from the beginning. So first let's talk about what you're gonna to need to complete this project. Of course, you're gonna need a transfer switch and this is by Reliance. This is a ProTran 2 30 amp uh, transfer switch and we'll talk a little bit more about this a little later in the video, actually about the transfer switch itself and what comes with it. But depending on your uh, install, you may need additional breakers. And in my install, we're gonna need 20 amp breakers because we're gonna be replacing some of these 15 amp breakers. And you're gonna need some wire connectors. I'm gonna be using these WAGO connectors. And you can see that I have some for three connections, two connections, and even uh, just one single connection. Depending on your setup and how you're gonna do your install and what's actually inside of your box when you go to connect the wires will dictate what type of connectors that you'll need. But I would recommend these WAGO uh, 221 connectors. And that's pretty much all the hardware you're gonna need to hook this up and get you running. Now, depending on your setup, you may need additional conduit to run your wires in, but they do give you some conduit uh, to place into your box. Now, in my scenario here, we have a trough. I got an electrical trough, so it makes things a lot easier for me, but you may have to cut into the wall and then go straight into the box in your setup, but it's really no different than me going into the trough and then running into the box from inside the trough. And next, I wanna talk about the tools that I know you're gonna need for sure. And if I miss anything, I'm gonna cover that throughout the video. But first, we got a pair of wire strippers and wire cutters, or you can use one single tool like this here. It's got the stripper here and the cutter up here. A uh, screwdriver, a four-way. You're gonna need a step bit for drilling into any metal in case you're going into the box where you have a knockout, then you wouldn't need this, but I'm gonna need that to go into my electrical trough. Then I have another four way here just for making things quicker and a drill for using this step bit. And I don't wanna forget to mention, be sure to have you a pair of gloves, some ear protection and some eye protection. And prior to even purchasing your transfer switch, it's important to locate which circuits that you wanna back up. In my service panel, we're gonna be backing up this 15, this 15, this 20, 20, 20, and this 20 uh, amp circuits. Let's discuss what comes with the transfer switch. Of course, you'll have a manual. You'll get your exterior box, or if you want to place this in a different location, the connection to the transfer switch, you can use this box. This particular model comes with an additional adapter where you could plug in a 20 amp cord, but I won't be using that adapter in my scenario, but with this model, you do get that. We also receive some conduit. This is 18 inches and it does have the protective sleeves on each end. We'll get a 10 foot 30 amp power cord which is very nice that that's included because those are pretty expensive. Some electrical wire nuts, and then the connectors, so you can connect your conduit into your electrical trough like I got here, or into your electrical panel. And of course, last is the actual transfer switch itself. This is a 240 volt transfer switch. I'm gonna be using it as a 120 volt transfer switch and it doesn't make a difference of how I'm gonna be wiring it today, whether I wanna use it as 120 volts 
or 240 volts. That all is dictated by the special little cord that I have that will plug into this from the generator that we're using. So if we want to use it as 120 volts uh, one day and then we want to turn around and use it as 240 volts the next day, we can. It's just a plug that will make a difference, not the way that we're wiring this. And this is the adapter that I'm talking about. This side would plug into your portable power station and that four wire section would plug into the cord that come with your transfer switch. And this is pre-wired for a 10 gauge wire that would run that 30 amp maximum breaker that we see rated up here. And these 20 amps, if we wanted to put it in these four slots is the maximum that we could put there. And all of those other wires that you're looking at here are 12 gauge wires. And once I get this completely wired up, I'll show you exactly how this functions and how to operate the transfer switch. This is a step that you may not have to do. I have to change out a couple of these 15 amp breakers. So I have to take the cover off of this transfer switch to put those 20 amp breakers in. Once on the inside, you'll see where the connections are made to each one of these breakers. All I'm gonna do for these two here are just remove this bridge and this bridge to create independent breakers for each one of these. So we'll have two 20 amp breakers rather than one single 20 amp breaker. And we're gonna replace these two with 20 amp breakers. So we're just gonna remove this uh, blue wire and this orange wire and put 20 amp breakers in. Now it is important that we get compatible breakers and you'll see at the main bottom right there that it see, says G-E-T-H-Q-L. That's the breakers that I have that I'm gonna be putting in this uh, panel box. Now watch how easy this is to remove. So flip your breaker up and then start to rotate this. All we're doing is backing out the pin. You wanna be careful because that centerpiece will drop. And after further review, I don't think this is a breaker that you can just remove this bridge. There are double pole breakers that you can just remove the bridge and you can use them individually. I'm looking at the markings and on the back side of this, it says internal common trip. So I'm guessing this is together and I wanna make sure I'm installing the proper breaker here. So I'm just gonna get two additional 20 amp breakers and I'm just gonna replace this with two individual 20 amp breakers that I can buy from the store. Now that single 20 amp breaker is now two 20 amp breakers. And to change these out is exactly the same thing. Let's just loosen up one of these, pull the wire out, and take the breaker out. Let's fix that wire that looks better. And then we'll just reinstall it. Just in case you're wondering, this wire and the red and black wire, that will go to your plug, whether you're putting it here or you're going to the outside. And I'm gonna be installing the plug on the front, so I'm gonna remove the screw and take this knockout right here out so we can put it right here. Now we gotta disconnect this ground and we need this ground wire over here. So this side's already stripped back for us. I'm just gonna put right into this pin right here. So I'll use the other side of that and tighten it down. And then I'm gonna strip this side. So I'm gonna cut the wire and then I'm gonna strip it. I'll cut it about right there. I connected the ground right here. Now I don't like doing this because this is 10 gauge and that's 12 gauge wire. I got it tightened down really tight down on this. So this will not move anywhere, but I didn't see anywhere in the back side where I had a tap where I could put the ground lug into the back of the panel. So this is the only thing that I could find that I can do to hook this ground over here into the plug. Now to connect the wires to this, you see that each one of these are marked. We have a W for white, a G for green, and then we have an X and a Y. So the X is gonna be your red and your Y is gonna be your black. Next, we need to find the center of our conduit 
and mark it on the box so we can start drilling our hole. I'm gonna guess about right there. Now that we found our placement where we need to drill the hole, I'll take this back off the wall and then we'll get the step bit and drill into the electrical trough. The step bit has all these different sizes. Once I drill through this, we're gonna take it to right at one inch. Now that I've got the transfer switch put back up on the wall, we'll grab our measurement for the conduit that we need to put down here at the bottom. And before you put your conduit in your fitting, make sure that you have the protection sleeve put on. And when you put it in there, it should look something like that. So you can see the protection sleeve. What that does is protect the wires when you're pulling it through it so it doesn't get snagged and cause a damaged wire. Now that I've got my box cleaned up, I went ahead and installed this piece of conduit in the fitting and got it nice and secure in there. The reason I'm doing this is because I can't get to this Titan uh, boat to tighten this down if I have the transfer switch on the wall. So for me, this is the way I have to do it because the screw would come up and hit the bottom of the transfer switch or I would not be able to tighten it down. And if you need to, make sure to come back and tighten down this nut on the inside of your transfer switch because this could loosen up and you want all these to be tight. Up to this point, we haven't had to turn off any power, but we are about to run these wires into the service panel. So you wanna make sure that you're turning off all power to the service panel if possible. This is a sub panel, so I'm able to use the feeder breaker in my main service panel to turn this off and have absolutely no power in this. Now, if you're working in a main service panel, then you're gonna have uh, power on the bus bars even though you turn off the main breaker. So just be aware of that. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Opus Mega 2 to power these lights so I can actually see what's going on when I take the panel off. Now I need to work my wires into the box. And the first wire that I'll start with is the ground. So we got to connect it to this ground bar over here. We got separation between our neutrals and the ground because this is a sub panel. If you were working in a main panel, more than likely you're going to have that going to have a neutral ground bond. So you'll be able to connect them to the same bar. But when you're on a sub panel, that will be uh, separated. And I'm just going to take this up, get a quick mark on it where I want to cut the wire. The next wire that I'm working with is my neutral. I'll make my bend. I'm going to go right into that lug right there just to kind of give me a little bit of relief down here. We'll go right there. There's my mark. Now we need to make those connections to the breakers. I'm going to be using this 20, these 320s, and these two 15s. I've set the panel cover over to the side for reference, but I need to make the connections from here into the transfer switch. And identifying what wire hooks to what breaker is very simple because each one of these have corresponding letters for each breaker and each wire has a marking for A's. And then let's just pick another one out of here. This was for C's. Uh, that one back there is D. So you get the point. Each one, the red and black, are marked to the corresponding breaker. So to hook the A breaker up, we're going to use these wires. Now we'll take the red wire and hook it into the breaker. Our final step is to connect the two black wires together. And then I'm gonna complete that same process for the next breaker. And we just keep continuing that process over and over until we have them all connected. Technically, the transfer switch is completed. All we gotta do is turn on the breaker at the main service panel, then we'll turn on the uh, main breaker here, and then we'll start flipping some breakers to test everything out. And now that we have the transfer switch turned on, everything is on generator side, so it's all being 
uh, produced from the Opus Mega 2 power station. We do have an additional Opus B2 battery that's compatible with the Mega 2. So if you're interested in those, be sure to check those out because this is running this entire shop from this power station currently. We have 345 consumption and 430 production. We do have it hooked up to solar and the array is around 1600 watts but we're early morning and we're just starting to produce but we're able to overproduce even in the morning so we're actually charging the battery as we're using it we have the shop lights on we have these uh, lights that are on me so you can see me recording we have a pellet stove running and a couple electronics running in the background so this is a great option if you're looking to power an off-grid cabin, an RV, or even a solution for your house for essential loads. Something I do want to talk about because you will need one of these uh, cords. Now this is plugging into 120 volts and then it's connecting to a 240 volt um, cable that goes in to that transfer switch. And I mentioned this briefly in the video, but you definitely need this adapting cord. So it takes it from three prong to four prong, and then it transfers everything over here. So both of these legs are producing at the same time, rather than having one having 120 and the other having 120. With this cord, we're able to produce all of these circuits at 120 volts at the same time. On my transfer switch, I have every one of these turned to generator. That's what's running the Opus Mega 2 right now. And you have to have your breakers on. So these breakers run this side, right? So if I turn it on line, these become inactive and then those breakers take over. So we'll have the line is actually here. The generator is actually here. And then when we switch, and this is for the lights right here, so you can't even really see it. So we're just switching these over and then everything right here. Now we're gonna go over to consumption and we're not consuming anything. But if we come back over and then we turn these back on, you'll see that it ramps up and we're back up to around 344 watts. I've turned on even more things to get this up over a thousand watts to kind of just give you an idea how this would work if you're using a larger load. So all the lights in the shop are on and those big ones that you see up here, those consume a lot of electricity. And then we have the lights that are on me, pellet stove, and a couple other electronics. So as you can see, this could do a great job of acting as a backup. 